Good evening and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. Well, we are back doing catamaran reviews. This time we're coming from the Annapolis Sailboat Show. And what we're looking for is a catamaran that is perfect for live aboard purposes. Boats you've seen in the previous episodes are the Balance Series with the 526 and the 442. And then we went and checked out the exquisite X5 Plus. And this is a boat I know very well because I sailed from South Africa to the Caribbean on an X5. Now the X5 Plus is two tons lighter, a lot of upgrades and changes since the original one I was on. But I gotta say, this is a rock solid boat very well worth being a liveaboard cruiser. It's just whether you can afford it. So looking at a slightly less expensive series of boats, I went on to the Fontaine Pajos. So in the previous episodes, you saw me do the 40, the 42, the 47, and this episode, we're gonna go through the 51. Now the 51 is very comparable in size to the Exquisite X5 and the Balance 526. So yeah, worth like an apples to apples comparison. And to be honest, the Fontaine Peugeot 51, if you go with the all electric version, is up there in price to where they're not that different in price either. So you have to decide, A, if you have the budget to afford a boat like this, and whether you'd rather go boutique builder or mass production builder. And like all the Fontaine Peugeot episodes before this, you're gonna get a tour by a knowledgeable representative, James Tiernan. We met him at the show, never knew him before this. Super nice guy, super knowledgeable. I'll put his contact information in the video description, but just so you know, there's no vested interest here. There's no commission or kickback if you use him. I just think he's a nice guy, and if I was ever buying one of these boats, I would definitely reach out to him. So let's get that guided tour by James right now. Okay, we're back at the 2023 Annapolis Sailboat Show at the Fontaine Peugeot site here. We've done the 40 in previous episodes. We did the 40, 42, 47. And now James here is gonna show us the new, biggest one here at this show, 51. So it's, it's the US debut for the Aura 51. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, evolution of the Saba 50. So I'm sure online you'll have seen the Saba 50. And it really is a revolution more than an evolution. Like they've changed so many things. Um, we're excited to show it this, this week. Um, it's been about a year in production, just over. Um, this is hull number 22. You'll see on the sign here, we're uh, nominated for boat of the year in its class, which we're excited about and we're hoping that we will win. And there, there's lots of cool things, but I think the versatility of this boat is what really sets it apart. Um, the first one of these I sold was to, uh, who's now a really good friend of mine, um, who actually took delivery in France, sailed the Med for a season, did the Arc in January. Um, while doing the arc, he beat every boat across the finish line bar two. So he beat all the Neil, the Neil 51, he beat by half a day hmm. and all of the other boats. So they really focused on performance on the, on the design of the Aura 51. We've seen the performance catamaran market grow a lot in the last five years. So um, there's been a focus on performance on this boat. So we have the hydraulic davits back here. Exactly. So as we're standing here, you'll see the hydraulic platform. Great for your dinghy. Um, but also for divers, it's really nice. Uh, for liveaboards, uh, it's just, um, you can order the boat without this and get dinghy davits, and I think 50-50 is what we're seeing right now. Some people love it, some people don't. And just because I know I'm gonna get asked the question, what's the upgrade price for the hydraulic lift? At uh, 38,000. 38,000. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Personally, for me, I would, I would definitely yeah. have it. You're, I think it's just You're awesome. gonna spend the kind of money for this boat. You're gonna spend yeah. that, especially if you are a scuba diver at all, because scooching your bum up on this with a tank on your back is a lot easier than pulling yourself up on a It is, on and a even ladder. simple things like grocery shopping. So you're an anchor, you're running in your dinghy for groceries, you're coming back, you can easily set it on the platform rather than the more narrow transom. Right. So, but each their own, I think the cons to it is for sure, uh, it adds weight, it's expensive. Um, but I think the pros definitely outweigh the, outweigh the cons. So as we're walking on here, I think you'll notice how big the cockpit is. We got a, an outdoor small galley area this is, today it's a plancha, which is basically an iron skillet. Mm -hmm. It can be an electric grill and it can be a propane barbecue too. It just depends on how you order it. Is this boat all electric or no this propane? This particular boat is not all electric. Not all electric, okay. We're seeing more and more of it and we've actually got four of the 51s in the water right now, which we're calling smart electric, which is a basically fully electric boat. Electric pods, um, no diesel at all, other than a backup diesel generator. Uh, but this particular boat is the standard Volvo engines. Uh, but we have added a lot of solar, so you can run the boat. When you're on anchor, you can still run all the boats without the generator running. Yeah. So you again, the solar, the solar extension off the back, right? So yeah. That makes, makes it for a lot of extra solar on this boat. You can have it two ways. You can do the solar arch on the back, or you can do integrated solar on the coach roof. 
Um, the integrated solar on the coach roof looks great and is pretty cool, but it's not as uh, efficient as the arch in the back. Right. So, so you can do either way. Either way. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a huge table, by the way. It is a huge. So eight people can dine here really comfortably. You can add an extension here if you want to sit here and have dinner. Um, but that's more of a charter layout when yeah. you have more. Yeah, you're eight. not going to. I don't think you want more than eight people. Yeah, you're, you're, no, you're good. Uh, and then you also, there's a little day bed. Yeah. That's nice. You'll notice as we're standing here how connected the interior and the exterior is. Uh, something we worked on on this boat is we really opened up this bulkhead so it is connected. It feels like one area. The galley is connected. Um, which is really important when you're, you know, when you're, when you're cruising, you want you're going to spend more of your time dining out here than you are on the interior. Right, for um, sure. You'll notice today we're at a boat show, it's quite busy. We now have seven people inside and it still doesn't feel crowded. Yeah. Um, well, you can definitely have quite the party on this boat. You can, it is a party <laughs> boat. What I really like is the access to the owner's cabin. Yeah. So when you're snorkeling, swimming, you don't have to traipse through the whole boat. You can actually come down. Yeah. I walk straight into the owner's cabin. Nice. There is one other bigger owner's cabin. We call it the super owner's cabin, which is the whole hull. Okay. Um, that's been a very popular model for me. Uh, I've sold quite a few of those, more than I have this layout. Uh, the argument against that is that it's wasted space, but if you're living aboard and it's just you and your wife or your partner for most of the time, it, it's a nice option. It, it really is a big area. Um, below me here is the engine room, so I'll give you a quick look here. Um, Again, like on the other videos you might have seen, we assume it's going to be owner the size operated. Of that. That's big. So this is really more of an engine room than it is a, uh, anything else. Um, again, it's a Volvo motor. You have the choice between Volvo or Yanmar, but Volvo is typically what we do. It's a smaller footprint and a bit lighter. So Volvo and Yanmar, the, the two biggest marine uh, diesel motors in the industry. Um, we like Volvo because they're a bit lighter and we're always conscious of saving weight because we want to keep the performance up. But Yanmar is a great motor too, so personally I'd probably pick Volvo, but so again as we're walking forwards you're going to see a lot of handholds, recessed hatches, the focus on safety is, is paramount. So nice big side decks, handholds, and a really, really big Ford cockpit. Yeah, this is very big. It's my favorite place to hang out when I'm sailing. So I'll set the sails. I'll keep. I know those two people. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> they look very comfortable. They do. <laughs> we'll get to them soon enough. Yeah. So um, I'm not wearing it today, but I've got a Garmin watch, right. which syncs with my Garmin electronics. So when I'm sailing, I can actually use the autopilot to steer the boat. So oh, I can hang out up here cool. when the sails are set. Um, and again, <clears throat> two big four peak lockers. They can be storage or extra cabins. Mm -hmm. Cabins are quite small, it's more for kids or crew. Um, something we're working on is walk through access into the four peaks from the interior so you can build a little storage room or workshop. Uh, What's the standard sail plan? Because we're out here with the sail. What do you, so, <clears throat> or what do you, what comes standard and what do most people option up to? So what comes standard is the Genoa and the main sail. Okay. What most people do is we add the bow sprit. What I'm seeing a lot of these days is a semi-permanent um, code zero screecher, so we're doing a UV cover on that screecher or code zero so they can leave it up for most of the time. Right. And take it down when they're not, you know, when the boat's stored. That way they don't have to haul the screecher code zero up every time they use it. Um, which works because you, you know yourself, if it's easy, you're going to use it. If it's a hassle, oh, you yeah, if you got to fight with it to get it up, then you're not going to use it. Yeah, exactly. So, and then of course the parasail are still very, very popular. So, on my typical cruising boat, we'll do three sails. We'll do a Code Zero, um, a parasailer, and maybe an asymmetrical or something in between, just to fill all angles. Uh, yeah, perfect. So two to three downwind sails is popular. Again, lots of storage. So you got your anchor locker here and easy access to it, and lots of storage. And the storage under, under these cushions. Yeah. yeah. And on the 51, we do our generator actually in this locker, so we keep it as far away from the owner's cabin as possible. Okay, for, for noise. And noise and smells and everything else. Perfect. So as we walk aft again, you'll see extra hand holes. You'll notice all the rigging is led aft. <clears throat> and on a dealer level, we actually upgrade this rigging so everything is aft, so you never have to leave the helm station. Um, again, the focus is a coupled cruise and you don't want to leave the helm station at any time if you have to. 
Um, one thing I'll point out is how easy this boat is to dock. Um, the fact that you can stand looking aft and see both transoms pretty easily and face where you're going for me is really easy. I don't have to think left is down, you know. Yeah. I'm not I'm not going backwards, I'm going forwards. And typically you do you do dock stern too, so love this helm station. Mm -hmm. Really do. And it's the same throughout the range. Um, and it's the strongest for me, the strongest design feature of the FP that I like. Not only that, but you you feel safe, you know, you're locked in, you know, the water's here when you've got this big fiberglass structure that's holding you in. Um, I do prefer the hard top option. This is the canvas bimini. Depends on your plan. If you told me you're only doing a year or two cruise and you're going to resell, um, I would say, okay, the bimini's probably, because it's half the price of the hard top. Um, but the longevity. Longevity yeah. of the hard top is worth it. And with the hard top, you can add solar, you can add lights. It's, 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 a, it's a much better kind of owner cruiser's option than maybe the soft bimini is. Yeah. Um, you've got everything here. You've got access to your winches. <clears throat> um, and as you're sitting here, you might notice how connected you are to the whole boat, which again, when you're offshore is really important, right? You want to know where everybody is, you want to be able to communicate with everybody. I can see whoever's in the galley, I can see whoever's in the aft cockpit, and I can see whoever's forward or up top here. Um, so when I'm, when I'm doing a night shift at two o'clock in the morning, it's very easy to get a cup of coffee passed up to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, than if I was on a fly bridge. So. Yeah, you know, screaming to get somebody's attention. Exactly. So if we come up top, again, another important feature we talked about is, you know, safety and being able to sail with single-handedly or short-handed. It's having the boom at this level so you can, you can access the mainsail rather than climbing up top is really good. Um, so you can see here, without climbing, I can easily reach the the head of the sail so if I need to change the halyard or alter it at all I've got really good access um, again when we were sailing I know my wife would not be happy if I was climbing up a, yeah. the mast to, to, do to get to the sail yeah. so sure uh, which is oh, really yeah. nice yeah. as we're standing here you'll notice the nice big ports into the salon yes very nice lots of natural light and it it, it it really opens up the salon um, and then we have our my wife and my friend Sean taking up the party deck. And they look great right there. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. There's, there's plenty of space for tons of people. Eh? Yeah, and this is where you're gonna hang out for yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah, for sure. Excellent, so we'll go check the inside. Yeah, let's go take a look. Oh, what's this thing by the way? So this is storage right now, but you can put, you can put a fridge in there, you can put whatever you want. You put a little, yeah, a little, little fridge for this is the booth drinks exactly excellent now we're back inside so now we're back inside and of course we're at a boat show so there'll be people coming and going yeah. but i think that's a good thing because we'll help we like show the size show how the many size. people are in yeah. here yeah. yeah yeah so in the galley here we're still with propane but you can you can choose to do fully electric also so you can do an induction cooktop which and a, what i would do for sure a multi-function electric oven which can steam it can air fry it can roast it can broil um, which is probably what I would do too. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends how you outfit the boat. And that's something we work a lot with people. And it's something people should think about is that the before the sale support is just as important as the after sale support, helping people realize what the options are, um, what's available, what's not available. You know, we'll spend six months with someone outfitting the boat and picking the right options. So. Uh, like this boat just arrived in the US, so we're still actually two months away from it being fully finished. Okay. So we're going to do some customizations. One of the yeah, that's why there's no TV, no TV over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we were excited to get it into the boat show, oh, so sure. we just cleaned her up and put her in. Lots of little hidey holes for things, little places to store stuff. So before we go below, I just want to talk about the different layouts. So there's uh, four different layouts on this boat. Uh, the first one, which is my favorite, is we call it the super, mass, uh, super Maestro. One hall is dedicated to the owner, and then we've got three cabins on the other side. This particular model that we're standing on today is called the Double Master, so we've got two owner's cabins and two guest cabins forward. Then we have a five cabin version, and then we have a six cabin version. So you can see the layouts online, or you can give me a call or whatever, and I'll be happy to show so you. So this one's a four cabin? This is a four cabin, Perfect. so each hall is going to be a mirror. Oh, okay. So we we'll can, do one and not bother. I think that's yeah. the best idea. Big fridges. So again, yeah, so 
we're, we're designing the boats, building the boats for cruisers, yeah. so we need as much cold storage and storage as possible. So, for, so two big drawer fridges yeah, um, with an ice maker. So it can be a freezer as well. Uh, freezer over here. Right in the galley. Mm -hmm. Another fridge outside. Yeah, by the. Uh, and then an option for an ice maker over here. Oh, on this on this outside. Yeah. Cabinet. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and and with the ice maker, you got a ton of options. One thing again, like on the other boats, I call the Amel fridge because the Amel sailboats always have a fridge under the. Oh city. really? You can add. Oh there. You can yeah. add a fridge or freezer under oh, that's, here yeah, if you really size. like. That's a big size. Yeah. It's big size. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So, again, a lot of storage. You, you won't be able to see how much storage is in this boat until you get on and start pulling things open. Like the whole beneath the floor where we're standing here is storage. Um, so really, you got to get on and start pulling things open. To yeah, the storage. Realize. It doesn't. It's not obvious to, until you really focus on it. No. And as you're looking right now, that uh, salon table is very versatile. So right now we're looking at it as a coffee table. It actually um, pivots this way, raises up. And, and then there is um, inserts leaks. here to turn yeah. into like a six six person dining table. So um, that's very cool. What we don't want to do is it's nice to save this space when you're not using when it. you're not using it as a dining table. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. So let's go below. So forward, you're gonna have a guest cabin. Oh, excuse Oops. me. Okay. And aft, you're gonna have the owner's cabin. I think we took a quick quick peek of the owner's cabin. From the exterior, uh, yes, so we've got access yeah. from the stern, the transom, or access from the interior. Wow, Janice would love. She's seen it when we before we filmed this. She saw it and she fell yeah. in love with this. So the orientation of the bed is completely different to our, the rest of our range. And what's really nice is when you wake up, the first thing you see is the anchorage you're in or the marina you're in. The view is just amazing. Mm -hmm. And also when you're offshore. It's a nice position to be in. You rock to sleep a bit better, mm -hmm. so it's more comfortable when you are sailing. Uh, the TV is going to go here. Like I said earlier, we're still getting this boat together for the owner. We got about two months left of work, and then he's heading south to the Caribbean. <laughs> um, again, lots of storage you can't see. A little, um, little seat in here. Little seat. Ready to do stuff. <laughs> and uh, then you got. So we, we this is this is a this is the owner suite, but there's identical on the other side. Exactly there's right. Two owners. Exactly. Okay. So lots of storage behind me here, and then in this room you have a separate shower and a separate head. Again, we're keeping the two separate, so two can use at one time. Perfect. So it's a nice little bathroom area, and then as we go forward, <clears throat> it can be on either side. This is the perfect spot for the washer dryer. Right. So depending on what side you want it on, you can put it on. Um, we're going to do that, that next week for the owner. And then forward here is the guest cabin. Hello. No. <laughs> Hello. Um, again, separate shower, separate head, and a nice big bed that, again, you wake up and first thing you look at is the anchorage or the water that you're, you're docked at. You got port light there and a hatch up here for air. Yeah. And again, like you mentioned earlier, the yeah, headroom is just headroom. amazing. Yeah, you don't feel cramped at all. No, not at all. There, you got a sink, toilet, and then a separate shower with a wall, so you're not getting the toilet wet. Exactly. Nice. You enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it shows the size of the bed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've done the tour of the outside and the inside, so I've got a few questions for you. For me and my wife, I think we want to go as much electric as possible. No propane at all, as much solar as I can fit on the boat, <laughs> yeah. and uh, go for that hybrid drive, or sorry, uh, all electric drive. Sure. So how much so How much would the boat be standard with the diesel engines, and then how much extra for the fully electric? So to give you some context, the boat we just walked through sold for 1.78 million. Okay. That does not have the electric drives. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of solar and a lot of lithium, but it does not have the full electric option. If we were to go completely electric, so 3,000 watts of solar, a big lithium bank, electric pods, uh, all electric galley, it won't be 2 million, but it'll be close to it. Okay. You're probably looking at 1.9 plus. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, there's so many options in the 51, you can add or take off, but 1.9 would be a good, well-equipped, you know, Live air board. conditioning, yeah. 
fully equipped boats. And at what voltage are you running the systems on? 24 or? So it's 24, some 12 volts, okay. but 24 and 12 volts. Okay. Um, so again, it, it just depends how we put it but together. But if you went all free. electric with the propul electric propulsion, would it be all 24 at that point? or? I know. think so. I think we still have some 12 volt Good on day. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mostly 24. Yeah. And again, we've got four boats in the water that are fully electric and we're still designing. So things will change. Um, we consider those both prototypes, um, but they've worked so well. The owners are so happy. It's now becoming a production offering. So um, again, I think proof is in the pudding. If anybody wants to talk to one of those owners, I'd be totally willing and happy to introduce anyone just so they can talk to someone that's been through it already. Um, I'm fully confident. So our next available 51 will be sometime kind of late 25. And I'm very confident that the full electric yeah. offering is going to be more than reliable. Mm -hmm. Last question on all, all electric. When you're sailing, can you turn those electric motors into hydro generation? Absolutely. So that was one of our biggest hurdles was how do we regenerate the power when it's not sunny? Yeah. So our new electric drives are hydro generators when you're yeah. sailing. And the, the, the tests we've done is that you lose, you do lose boat speed, of course. Right. But it's not a lot. So it's somewhere between half and three quarters of a knot that you lose when you turn those into hydro generators. And those two electric motors would be 20 kilowatt each, or do you know the size? I do, but we're still we're still working out exactly how powerful they're going to okay. need to be. I think the first few we have in the water weren't as powerful as, as we needed them to be, so we're still working on that. Okay. Um, by the time this video is up, I might have a real yeah. firm answer on what Again, that's going to look like. Contact James, contact description in, in, in the video description, and exactly. he can give you the latest on the sizes. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, James. It was well, great to see me. this beautiful 51 foot. Now, the other ones we've seen in previous episodes, I said, I could live on this. I definitely could <laughs> yeah. live on this. Yeah. This is spacious. All right. Thanks, James. Again, anybody who has any questions, give them a shout. Please give me a call. Well, there you go. That's the Fontaine Peugeot Aura 51. And I got to say, I love this boat. Janice does too. You love the, like the dual master cabins was a cool idea. I know James was saying that the big super maestro with one big cabin for the whole thing is the way to go. But if you notice, if you look at the floor plan with the big maestro one, you have three cabins on the other side, which means the back cabin doesn't have any access to the inside of the boat without going out through the back transom area and through the outdoor cockpit to get into the boat. I'm not a fan of that. So I would definitely go with the one that they showed here, which is the four cabin dual master cabin version. And you might be, well, why do you need dual master cabins if it's just you and your wife and then some guests that come on from time to time? Here's why. If you're both sailing across oceans, you're gonna be taking shifts, which means the person who's off watch is probably gonna to wanna to be napping even in the middle of the day. And you don't want your spouse coming in to change out of a bathing suit into shorts or doing something else and coming in and out of the cabin, disturbing your sleep, right? If you have two master cabins, she could have all her clothes in one cabin, I could have all my clothes and stuff in the other cabin, and then we could decide, you know, do I take my naps in one cabin and we sleep in the other cabin or vice versa? And it gives you options and it's not like one member of the couple has a great master cabin and the other one has this little rinky dinky guest cabin so this way you both have an equally sized um, cabin plus you both have that awesome access from outside or inside on both hulls which is very cool so that's that's the one I would go with the four cabin version now let's talk about price he was saying pretty much 1.9 million dollars a little bit more it sounded like he was saying if you got the all electric with the as much solar as you could get on there and all that stuff sounds pretty pricey right like i was the first time i was like oh god i could i could pretty much get a balanced 526 for that um pretty close anyway and then i thought wait a second it's all electric the balance is not neither is the exquisite well exquisite does have a hybrid option coming but there's no hydro regeneration so there's some of that so you are getting all electric with that massive amounts of solar all that interior volume not only in your cabins with the access from both the inside and outside you have the front cockpit and you have that kind of like flybridge seating up on the top i mean this is definitely what i would consider a party boat and just like the other Fontaine Bajos, the waterline seems to underrepresent how big it feels when you get on it. This 51 felt like a 55. And that's because when I compare it to the Exquisite or even the Balance, it just felt so big. And I was like, this is only a 51? When I got on it, I was walking around, I'm like, this seems way bigger. So is it as performance oriented as the Balance 526? 
Probably not, because the balance is more carbon fiber, at least in the structural areas, and you can also get the all carbon fiber version if you really want to spend more money to go total performance, but you're going to give away a little bit of the interior volume and definitely a lot of that outdoor seating space. So you have to decide how you want your catamaran, liverboard catamaran to be. Do you want it to be a true performance cat so you get from A to B as quickly as possible? Or do you want it to be more, hey, it performs really well, as James was saying, that the, one of these 51s crossed in some arc and ended up coming in third and, and beating a lot of boats that a lot of people would say were, were more performance-oriented boats. So that shows it does have very, very good sailing capabilities. But while you're sailing relatively fast, you also have all that interior comfort. So yeah, price is up there but maybe it's worth it, especially if you can get that all electric propulsion with the hydro regeneration and whatnot. So something to consider. Like I said, every boat has its pros and its cons. Uh, the price tag on this one was a bit of a con, but all that extra features, all that extra space and all that seemed to kind of make it worth it. So it's whether you have the budget and if you are uh, do have the budget, do you want to spring for the more performance boutique builder or a little bit more comfortable, you know, more production builder? So it's a tough decision. I don't even know which one I would go with. If I had the exact same amount of money and I could get either one, I'd be, I'd be t tossing and turning trying to make that decision. I'd love performance, but you also like comfort. So since they're all around the same price, let me know in the comments down below which one you would go for, for about $2 million. The FP51, all electric version, the Exquisite X5 Plus, or the Balance 526. Hopefully you enjoyed this tour of the Fontaine Peugeot Aura 51. If so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification. And that's it. Till next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.